Like Jay-Z said, allow me to reintroduce myself. That's one of the reels that I'm doing with this video and this content and this whole campaign. I was listening to Jay-Z and Beyonce and that came to me or I got 99 problems, but a business ain't one. Hope you like it. So anyways, let's get into my story on how I got on The Apprentice TV show as a consultant. I know, I know. So much of my life, you guys, I know it's completely divinely led and guided and orchestrated and I'm more and more and more keen on being and doing my part. So how The Apprentice opportunity came up is my parents had watched it for years and I was in grad school at the time and I was um, also taking, I was taking accounting classes to towards getting my CPA. I already had my uh, MBA at the time and then I was working as a operations manager at a credit union where I worked all through undergrad and grad school and they paid for a good chunk of my school and super, super grateful. So my parents had watched the show for years, okay? I had watched an episode here and there. I've really never been a TV show series person for the most part. I did kind of start dabbling in it a little bit during the pandemic and I maybe watched like three or four shows the whole year. And now I'm very mindful of what I pick because I know how it can suck up your time. And I am very mindful of, is it is it aligned? Is it going to teach me something? Is it gonna pour into me, okay? So I'd watched a couple episodes of The Apprentice then, and my parents would tell me for years that you need to apply for the show, you would be amazing. You, like they used to tell me stuff like, you would kick Amorosa's ass, like all these different things, right? Well, I took for granted that in many ways, my parents are awesome, they're still human, but in many ways they are awesome. And I took for granted they were speaking such life into me and you know, just took it for granted and didn't really take heed to it, right? Although it interested me and it piqued my interest. And interestingly enough, one day when I was walking into my accounting class at University of Houston, some students that I didn't even know so just to give you a little bit of backstory, um, there, we had formed this little like accounting group coalition and it was literally like the United Nations, you guys, I'm not exaggerating. It was me, which if you don't know my background, I'm half Polish, half Bulgarian. It was Sandeep, you know, she's from India. It was Jeffrey, he's Chinese. Then it was Audrey, she's Caucasian. And then I'm missing a couple people, but it was literally like the UN coalition, okay? And we would meet up for like wine tastings or hanging out, like all this fun stuff, okay? And so there was a big group of people I knew that I sat in the back with. So I always sat in the back and um, I don't know why, because sometimes I sat in front of classes, but in that particular class, I sat in the back and um, you know, would still raise my hand, would still answer, ask questions, answer questions, would still engage. So it wasn't that I was in the back, but disengaged. Like, no, I was engaged um, in class, in the curriculum. It was actually a government accounting class, which was super interesting. That's how we met. And that at the time, that was the only class that fit my schedule to get like all the credits I needed for the CPA, okay? So, but I didn't know a lot of the, the students that sat up front. And I was walking in class one day and they started telling me, they were, they said, you know, an apprentice is on, on campus today and you should totally go try out. And this light bulb or this antenna went off in my brain and I was like, or like some of you might know the Scooby-Doo commercial or Scooby-Doo cartoon, right? I was like, er? But I didn't say ruh -ruh. I said er, cause it piqued my interest, right? And I said, um, why do you say that? And they said, well, you always ask amazing questions. Uh, your presentations are so great. You're so engaging. And you know, some of the stories you bring up or some of the examples, like we just feel like you'll be great. And it was like four or five of them. So they had clearly talked about this or it was so interesting. So I said, huh? And so I started Googling and looking up stuff online, like during class, I emailed, or I think I texted my boss cause I was supposed to be, the manager the next day and i emailed him to see if maybe because the apprentice the producers nbc mark burnett productions was going to be on campus again the next day 
So I emailed him to see if maybe he could fill in for me. But by the time I did it, it was like nine o'clock at night. And I knew he always uh, got up at like four. So I figured like he was asleep, he didn't answer. So then, you know, I'm figuring out other alternatives and I'm driving home and my mom and I are on the phone. My mom's a rock star, you guys, in so many ways. Like I, I could never, like my mom and my dad, but like so many moments with my mom, I'm just like, I was blessed with an, I'm blessed with an angel. Like I'm so blessed with an angel. She's like telling me as I'm driving, cause of course I'm not gonna Google and look at stuff as I'm driving. So she's pulling it up. She's letting me know, you can submit a videotape. You can do this, you can do that, da, 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 right? So I fig you know, figured it out, filmed like the seven minute clip. It was like a seven ish minute clip on why you should be, why I should be the next apprentice. I basically said, you know, things and highlights about, you know, my work, like who I am, my adventurous spirit, my work at the credit union, the results I've gotten being a scuba diver, like, you know, traveler, all these like fun, different things, right? Like very wide range that I'm multicultural, that I speak four languages, etc. You know, and sent it out leap of faith. Couple weeks go by and uh, I get an email from the production team and that they wanna talk to me. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? And I remember I was sitting in my brother's room and um, calling one of the executive producers of Mark Burnett Productions. And uh, you know, they start telling me right away, you beat out 1.2 million applicants, you're in the final 50, and we are considering you to be on the show on season four. And I'm like, oh my God, this is happening. Whatever this is, this is happening. I'm here for it. I'm open to it. Okay. And they said, the next thing we need you to do is, um, we're going to call you and you need to have, you know, video, all the things on, it's going to be an impromptu. We're not going to tell you any of the questions in advance and we're going to go from there. So I get my makeup done, I get my hair done, all the things, you know, get set up, have the interview, um, you know, and go smashingly well, wait to hear. A couple weeks go by, I get a phone call at the credit union as I'm working. And um, the producer says, you know, this is so-and-so, the exec executive producer from Mark Burnett Productions, you know, NBC, do you want the good news or the bad news first? And I said, and I, oh, and when I picked up the phone, you guys, I was screaming. I was like, oh my God, it's the apprentice, oh my God. The first time that I talked to them, okay? In the middle of Kroger at the credit union, all the things did not care. I meant to say that. I think I got the phone calls, re no, 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 it's, it's right. I had it right. So that was the second phone call. I was gonna say, I thought I got it reversed, but no, the second one happened at the credit union. So then I ran outside and I tell like my boss and my coworker, I'm running outside, I'm talking to the apprentice, like, I don't care. Like, I care about you, but I don't care about you right now, right? So I go outside and he says, you know, do you want the bad news or the good news first? And I said, the fact that you're calling me tells me this is all good news. Because in my mind, it was like, well, if I was rejected, you wouldn't even be calling me, right? And he says, you're no longer being selected or considered for the show, but we really want you to work as a consultant on the show. And, you know, and basically that led to him explaining what that meant, you know, basically on preseason, advising the producers, working in and around uh, Trump Tower and New York City and all the things. And it, you know, it was a paid position, but then we had to find housing. Whereas, and I say we, cause it was like 10 to 15 of us. And then versus the contestants ended up getting housing, but they weren't paid. So that just gives you the differences, right? So you guys, it literally, I was there for five plus weeks. It literally was like business boot camp or an MBA on steroids, okay? We basically tested, AB tested in the terms of modern marketing, right? But in real life, tested different companies, different tasks as pre-contestants and gave feedback and had cameras following us around all around New York City. We worked with incredible global brands. I believe I'm already out the NDA, but if I am not, uh, I'm out the NDA, I'm out the NDA. Non-disclosure agreement for those of you that don't know, but just to be extra, extra safe, and like you would know all these brands. 
So we worked with a top global fitness brand. We worked with a top global nutrition brand. We worked with a top global music brand. We worked with a top global retail brand. We worked with um, venues and places in and around New York City. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite projects, one of them where I was the project manager, we worked with an up and coming artist. We designed her press kit. She worked with the stylist from Mariah Carey. Um, we, she wrote a song, a new song. We were in music studios designing. This is all in less than 48 hours, you guys. We, she was writing a song. She produced that song. It aired live on national radio with callers calling in versus another song writer that was on the other team, right? And we presented to the CEO and COO of this huge media global brand, okay? Less than 48 hours running on pure, unadulterated adrenaline. Like I think I literally ended up leaving some of the studios at 3 a.m just in time to get like a two hour nap, then start getting ready for my, um, to pick up the press kit and stuff, the printed press kit from FedEx, and then go deliver the presentation with my other project manager that we decided a man and a woman would present. And um, the CEO and COO of this major global media brand said to the producers and executive producers and team of The Apprentice and Mark Burnett Productions and NBC, they said, that was the best presentation that we've like, ever seen. And they said, it's better than even Bruce Springsteen's manager. Mic drop. That was one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. So I ended up, I ended up being and working on the show on similar type projects for about five to six weeks. They did offer me a slot to work on Martha Stewart afterwards. And I thought about it, but honestly there was many, and this was even like, there was many things I didn't resonate with there. And then my brother was graduating from his undergraduate degree in Austria. And for me, it was more important for me to go. And it was one of those where I believe like, I believe like what's for me is for me. And I knew if that path was supposed to continue in any way, shape or form at that moment, it would, whether it was after the graduation or whatever the case was. So comment down below on what you're surprised about on how I ended up on NBC, The Apprentice and working as a consultant and just the, anything you wanna share or any questions you have. And obviously a lot of this you guys has to do with marketing and being yourself and putting yourself out there and definitely check out my links down below for all the resources that I share to create it, a life and business you love with freedom. And remember, create, transform and inspire because you are born to.